Nicole, the math lady, and today we're going to be talking about the powers of 10. So powers of 10 are pretty cool because they're very easy to work with. Let's take a look at just how we write powers of 10. So powers of 10, we know that 10 squared, the easy part when we have 10 squared is we know that the number of zeros in our actual number is the number in the exponent, which means our number is going to have two zeros in it. We put a one, we have two zeros. So 10 to the third has three zeros. One, three zeros. One, two, three. For the number 1,000. What about 10 to the, let's say, the seventh? Okay, that's going to be one with seven zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Boom, boom, which is 10 million. Here's a rule for multiplying powers of 10. When we multiply powers of 10, we only have to add the exponents together. So 10 to the second power, 10 to the third power is going to be 10 to the fifth power. And let's actually show you how that works. Well, we know that 10 to the second power has two zeros in it, which is 100. And to the third power has three zeros in it. So 100 times 1,000, just count up the number of zeros. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so 100,000, which is the same thing as 10 to the fifth. It only makes sense that a similar kind of thinking would work for when we're dividing powers of 10. So we're going to divide 10 to the third by 10 to the second. All we have to do is subtract our exponents here. 3 minus 2 is 1. 10 to the first power. Let's take a look at what that actually means. So this one has three zeros divided by two zeros. Well, 1,000 divided by 100, we know we can just cross out zeros to see what's left. It means that all we have left is 10, and 10 to the first is 10. So the rule, when multiplying powers of 10, add the exponents. When dividing powers of 10, subtract the exponents. Powers of 10 can also make expanded notation writing a little bit easier. Let's take a look at the way we did it before. So expanded notation for this number would be 3 times 1,000, because it's in the thousands place. Then we would add 4 times 10 plus 3 times 1. Okay, let's use powers of 10 this time. So we would say 3 times 10, it's got three zeros, so 10 to the third, plus four times, it's got one zero, so that would be 10 to the one, plus three times, there's no zeros in the, in the number one, so we're gonna say 10 to the zero. 10 to the zero power is the same thing as saying one. It's also helpful in writing really big numbers a lot shorter. Here we go, we've got six billion here. So normally we'd write six billion, we'd write a whole bunch of zeros, nine to be exact. Or we could choose to just write six times, well how many zeros did we say we had? We had nine zeros. So 10 to the ninth is the same thing as saying six billion. But what about one and a half million? Things are a little bit different here. You gotta think this one through. Well one and a half, the first thing you wanna do is change that to a decimal. So the one and a half would be one 0.5. And now, is it going to be all, uh, well, we know millions would be here, right? So it would be six zeros, but one of those spots is taken up by a five. So instead of having six zeros, we're going to have five. Okay, here's what I mean. One, let's actually write it out. One and a half. There we go. Thousand million. How many zeros do we have? One, two, three, four, five. So normally you might think, well, it's in the millions place. Shouldn't I have six zeros? Uh, but when you have that extra little space that's taken up by that decimal, 1.5, you've got to decrease your exponent by one to accommodate for it. Here's the last two things I want to show you. What happens when we multiply and divide by powers of 10? Let's first start with multiplying. Here I have a number, 3.62 and I'm gonna multiply it by 10 to the first. So we've got one zero in 10 to the first, and we're gonna move our decimal point one to the right. Think about it. It'll be 36.2. 
we know when we multiply, essentially this is kind of like saying 10 times three and something. So we're gonna move it, we know it's gonna get a, be a bigger number, right? 30 something. Okay, try it again, 3.62, but this time we're gonna multiply it by 10 to the second power, which means there's two zeros in that 10. So this time we're gonna move our decimal point two places to the right, which is 362. Let's do it again. 3.62 times 10 to the third. I bet you can understand we're gonna move our decimal places three to the right. One, two, and we're gonna have to add a zero as a placeholder to make that work. Three, six, two, zero. And we can continue on and on by multiplying this way by powers of 10. We just multiplied by powers of 10. This time we're gonna divide by powers of 10. Here we go, same number, 3.62 divided by a power of 10. This time the decimal point's gonna move one place. This time it's going to the left. So it'll be 0 0.362. And here we've got two zeros in the 10 to the second. We're gonna move our decimal point two spaces to the left, which is 0 0.0362. And as you can imagine, with the three zeros, we're gonna move our decimal place three spaces to the left. And 0 0.0362. So again, the rule when multiplying, decimal point goes to the right, the number of zeros, and when dividing, it goes to the left, the number of zeros. And that's it. I call this a hodgepodge of a lesson because it's just all different things about the powers of 10. Now, tons of practice problems where you can put all of this into play. Make sure you give them a try. It's Nicole the Math Lady, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.